So to start, we're going to be solving all of these centers, which is the three by three area on the inside. So first try to make this middle bar like this. So it has the middle center and two more centers attached to it. So that should be pretty simple. Then we're just gonna make another bar somewhere else on the cube, attach it, then another one over here. So we have one here and one here, and we can join them together like this. And then we just need to put this one over here so we can move this out of the layer, turn it, and then move it back in. So once you make another bar, just attach it up to the top and then do it again for the last one. So once you finish the first center, turn it upside down and we'll be working on the other side. So now since the top middle center is yellow, we're gonna look for yellow pieces. And here's a yellow center piece that we can attach to make the top bar over here. And here we already have one done. So we can get this one going up to here, move it up, and then align the top to be vertical so that we can move this white center back down because we did break that while making the top. Now, just like before, you make two more lines to put here and here, and then you'll be done with the center. So once you make a line and you're ready to move it up to the top, just move it up like that. Then we need to bring the white center back down. So turn the top 180 degrees and then move it back down. So if you get the case where you're making the last yellow bar, but you can't find where that piece is, it just might be on top. And if it is on top, then move it so that it can come down into a different side. So I'm gonna move it down here and then move it out of the way and then restore the white center. So now from here, you could just attach it all together. And when you're moving the last bar up to the top, make sure you don't move it up to the open spot because then you won't be able to fix the bottom center. So instead, move it all to the same side, right side, right side, and then move it up. And then you can turn the top 180 degrees and move it back down. Then that solves two centers. So once you finish two centers, put them on the side and we'll be doing the centers along here. So I'm just gonna, I see blue here. Uh, so I can attach this part to here and that makes the middle bar. And then of course we just need to make the two other bars. So I'm gonna align this up to be vertical so I don't break it while I do these moves. And then I'm just gonna finish up this bar. So uh, like this and attach it and just do the last one. So after finishing one center here, I move up to the next center and I'm just gonna do the same thing as before, but make sure I don't break up the blue center as I do that. So here, red has one piece already attached to the middle. I'm going to attach another one here. So once I attach it and make this middle bar, blue gets broken. So I need to align this middle bar so it's vertical and then I can move blue back up. So then I can just continue as usual, just making sure that you always restore all centers that you've already made. So the concept for inserting the last bar into the center is the same as before. You can't just move it in like that because then blue can't go back into where it should be. So instead move it to the other side and then now you can move it in. Just move it here, turn 180 degrees and move it back up. Once you finish this, move up again. And now we're just doing another center. So I can attach this one to here like this. And that makes one bar. Then I can, uh, I see two here and I can attach this one to it like that. And then I can directly move it to the right side and move it back down. So if you keep doing that, you should be able to solve two bars over here, but not necessarily the last bar. This one might be a bit tough to pair up. So I'm gonna teach you a trick that can bring any piece from up here down into the front. So since this one belongs over here, then I'm going to put it on the matching spot on top, and then I'm going to move it down into where it should go. And make sure you remember this whole pattern. It's not necessarily one algorithm, but this pattern will apply for no matter which pieces you're trying to move into here. So I'm gonna move this one into here and then turn it so it's in a different layer. So I'm gonna move it into this layer like this, and then move that down as well. So just that layer, then move this back to where it was, move back up, and then move this back to the new layer, and then move that back up. So to show another example of what you could get, we want this green one over here. So I'm gonna align it like this, move it down, move this into a new layer, move that down also, and then move this back to the start, up, back over here, and then back up. So anytime you're stuck, you should be able to use that trick in order to finish off the last two centers. So the next step, what we're gonna do is make stuff like this. So edges all joined together with the same colors. So here's a white and blue edge, here's white and blue. So what you should do once you find two is get them across from each other like this and um, like that. So they are in a way right now where they don't line up when you push them together like that. So then what you should do is flip either one of them. It doesn't matter. So the algorithm to flip one edge is the same as the one you would have used for a four by four. And it's the same as what you use for larger cubes as well. It goes like this, R, U, R prime, F, R prime, F prime, R. So now if you try to join them together, they will join together properly. So try to get all three across from each other. So we have uh, the last white blue over here, so I can move it down over here. And uh, you can see that these two don't line up, but these two do. So we're not gonna touch these two, we're just gonna flip this one. So we put it on the front right slot and we're just gonna do the flipping algorithm. 
So once you get all three across from each other like that, just join them together. It breaks up the centers, but what we're going to do is lift it into the top layer like that, replace it with an unsolved edge. So put this edge over here, and then we're going to move that back down. Now you can restore all the centers and then everything is fine. So this edge has been preserved on top. And if you make sure that the replacement is done with an unsolved edge, then all the other solved edges you will have on the cube should still be solved. So you may get to the point where you pair up some edges and then there's nothing in the top to replace it with, everything is solved, then there may be things on the bottom you can replace it with. So you just turn the cube upside down and then you can replace it with this one. But eventually you will get to the point where you just cannot replace it with anything else. And in that case, you'll have to learn a different way to pair up the edges. So if this one can pair with this one like this, then don't actually pair them together. Flip this one, so like that. Uh, you can really flip either side, but what you just want is the same ones to be on the same side. So these are all in the bottom. Then what you do is think, okay, we want this one over here. So what we can do is move this spot over. Then we can turn this edge upside down by flipping. Then when we move it back, it'll be in the correct spot. So move this over, flip, and then now it's up here and we can move it back and that joins them all together. So if you use that flipping technique to solve the last few edges, there's a 50% chance you will have finished all the edges, but the other 50% of the time you'll get one flipped edge left and you will have nothing else that's unsolved. So just one edge you have to fix. This is called parity and requires the parity algorithm. If you know the 4x4 parity algorithm, it's very similar. And I'll have a link to the visualization of this algorithm in the description in case the notation is a little bit confusing. So it goes like this, R U2, X, which means rotate to face the bottom, R, U2, R, U2, 3, R prime, which is to pull three layers down, U2, L, U2, R prime, U2, R, U2, R prime, U2, R prime. That flips this edge. So if that was confusing, make sure you check the link in the description and you can follow that move by move. So once you reach this point where you've solved all of the edges, then you can just go ahead and solve it like a three by three, which is just with edges, corners, and centers. It's exactly like a three by three. You start by making the cross and so on. However, you regularly solve a three by three. There you go. The method I've taught in this video is quite basic, especially the edge pairing stage that will actually take a very long time to do one edge at a time. So if you wanna learn a more advanced method, then you can check out the video that I have right here. If you're wondering what cube I'm using, the link is in the description. And if you wanna know what's the best budget five by five speed cube, then you can check out the video coming up on the end screen. Special thanks to all of my generous supporters on Patreon. If you wanna support cubing tutorials like this one, then you can check out patreon.com jperm. Thank you guys all so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.